upper middle class, thereby enhancing the inequality in Indian society. And third, promoting and providing undue benefit to rich class and corporate houses. Sir, Finance Bill 2024 is to give effect to the taxation proposals for the financial year 24-25. And this bill intends to give effect to the taxation proposals for a gross tax revenue of 38,40,170 crores of rupees, out of which union government net tax revenue is 25,83,499 crores of rupees. So the tax revenue in the budget estimate seems to be realistic, and I hope that the budget estimate is correct and that can be achieved. But it is estimated that the government's total debt is right, rising to 185 lakhs crores of rupees. That is 56.8% of the GDP during the current fiscal year, and it was 58.2% at the last of the March 2024. So in this scenario, I would like to ask a specific question to the Honorable Finance Minister. How you are able to, how you are going to contain the fiscal deficit to 4.9% of the GDP for 24-25, and how to contain it 4.5% in the year financial year 25-26? Sir, Finance Minister, maybe, maybe it may be possible to contain the FD at the rate of 4.9 for the current year, because you have got 2 lakh 10,000 crores of rupees as different from the Reserve Bank of India. But my question to the Honorable Minister is, what about 25-26? How you are going to contain the fiscal deficit as mandated by the FRBM Act for the financial year 25-26, for which I am seeking a clarification or answer from the Honorable Finance Minister. Sir, coming to the taxation proposals. Sir, this is a new subject I would like to point out that net household savings. Sir, household savings was the major strength of Indian economy. Net household savings was once it was 10% of the GDP. It has come to 7.5% of the GDP. Sir, now it is just 5.5% why it has come down. The reason is all the benefits, exemptions, deductions which were provided to the household savings were drastically taken away and you are not touching the higher income groups. That higher income groups are not being targeted in the budget and in the finance bill to earn more revenue. Sir, I would like to cite an example regarding the higher income group. See, 50 lakh income coming, 50 lakhs to 1 crores of rupees. Sir, please have a very interesting statistics. In the year 21-22, it was 1,84,300 persons were submitting returns. 22-23, it is 2,52,000. 23-24, it is 3,34,000. That means a 40% average increase in the higher income group. Sir, coming to B, 1 crore to 5 crore annual income. Sir, very interesting switch. That means a 45 lakh per month income. See the increase, how much? 21, 22, it was 64,774 persons were filing the returns. 22, 23, it is 91,425. 23, 24, it is 1 lakh 10,665. Sir, no additional taxation on the higher income groups. And kindly, your, your chairman, you may kindly see the per capita annual income is just 2 lakh 25,000. All these figures would go to show that the so called economic growth is not complying the provisions of equity and the growth, the so called growth is jobless growth. It is well established out of these statistics. Sir, coming to the second point that is regarding the retail traders. Sir, you see, kindly see that the small and medium traders are under the brink of collapse due to the online trading and also the multinational corporations, multi-chain shops. Sir, they are, they, are, they are struggling to survive, not able to compete with the multinational corporations. And further, you have to see that this is a labor-intensive sector. Trade sector is a labor-intensive sector. Average, it is four crores of retail traders are in the country. You, in the, you please multiply it into five. It will be 20 crores of people are depending on the small and medium traders in the country. But they are finding it very difficult to struggling to survive because of this multinational corporations, big malls, and also this uh, online shopping, and also this other shop, this shops also. And they, now, sir, they are now demanding to have ESI medical benefit. 
because they are finding it very difficult to have the proper medical care also. So my suggestion is reasonable restriction of imposing such may be introduced on online trading. And the third point, sir, scrap 18% GST on life and health insurance premium. Pardon? How many points, points is still you more? Sir, all I am, I am going, I am... Because already, if you have taken more than six minutes... No, 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 point, sir, sir, the already, I have, I have already said... Make, make it, sir. Yes, yes. Sir, scrap 18% of GST on life and health insurance premium. Sir, right to proper medical care is a fundamental right envisaged in Article 21 of the Constitution. Right to proper medical care will come within the ambit of right to life under Article 21 of the Constitution. If that be the case, it is a mandatory obligation of the government to see that pro proper medical care is being provided. Sir, implementation of 18% of the GST on life and health insurance premium tends to penalize the individual seeking to protect themselves and their families against life's uncertainties for which my amendment is there. Sir, the fourth one is import duty on raw cashew nuts. Sir, cashew industry is facing severe crisis. I am from the district of Kollam. It is a cashew capital of the country. It is facing severe 90% of the cashew industry is closed. And there is a 2.5% of import duty is there. I urge upon the government of India, especially in particular to the finance minister, please withdraw the 2.5% of customs duty on import of the raw cashew nuts and also declare a package, comprehensive package to uh, revive the traditional industry of cashew sector. Sir, coming to the next point is regarding the PF pension. Six sir, points. sir, sir, two, three points. Two, three points. I will, I will, I will. See, sorry, you are, so many interventions from your side is also losing my time. So, sir, <laughs> <laughs> sir, the PF pension, sir, the, the, the PF pension, the Supreme Court judgment is there. Sir, 411-2022, the Supreme Court judgment is regarding the PF pension. Now, the, the pensioners are entitled to ha get the higher pension on giving the arrears of the contribution which they have to. They have already paid the arrears, but for unfortunately it is getting so much time in getting the pension. And further, when they are getting the arrears of the pension, income tax is being imposed on it. Kindly withdraw that tax. That is another suggestion. And the final point is regarding this budget is anti-federal fiscal policy. Sir, I will substantiate that point and then I will conclude. Why I am saying is union government is reducing the financial trans sorry, trans transfer to the states. Sir, 40 15th Finance Commission, the award was 42%. 15th Finance Commission, the award was 41%. 15, 16 financial year, transfer to the state was just 35 percent. When we come to 23, 24 financial year, it has come down to 30 percent. Sir, 15, 16 revenue of the union government. Sir, I am concluding. The gross, gross growth of union tax revenue is more than doubled during this period, but share of the states only just doubled. Further, the grants in aid also declining like anything, and the cess and surcharge collection is increasing like anything. Early because, sir, sir, please, cess and surcharge is not coming within the purview of the divisible poll, and government of union government is getting benefit, and the states are Thank being you. suffered, Thank and you. also, sir, I'm, I'm finally concluding, and finally, the central sponsored schemes also, also, there are also the states' liability and burden is increasing. So my point is, since the finance bill is not addressing the general common issues of the people, and it Thank is anti-federal fiscal policy, Sir, I do oppose Singh the finance bill Sir, moved Singh by the Honorable Singh. Finance Minister. With Thank these words, I conclude. Thank you very much, sir. Dhanewa, Sabapati ji. Sir, speaker, sir. Sabapati ji, jis se budget session ki shuruaat